Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars video. So, The Mandalorian and Baby Yoda have taken the internet by storm, reopening questions about Yoda and his species that Star Wars fans have been discussing for a long time. Today, I want to specifically tackle the question of whether every member of Yoda's species is powerful in the Force. And I'll do so with a bunch of lore and a heaping of healthy speculation. So, everyone knows that the two or three members of the Yoda species that we've seen in canon have been very strong with the Force, but does such a strength extend to the entire race, which by the way has no name, making this video very fun? There's two avenues that we'll take to answer this question, the basic one and the more complicated one. The basic will involve looking at every member who has existed both in the Legends and current canon, while the more complicated one involves looking at a bunch of different aspects of the lore, from the way the Force works to how species work in the Star Wars universe and more, and with all of that together, I'll come to my conclusion. So let's start easy. Star Wars has been very limited with how it's included members of Yoda species, and that extends surprisingly even to Legends. Canon has given us so far the two that all of you should know, that's Yoda and the child from The Mandalorian. Then we have a lesser well-known but still quite recognizable character, Yaddle, a female of Yoda species who appears in The Phantom Menace, and unfortunately for us, not the rest of the prequels. Yaddle also served on the Jedi Council, so was obviously gifted in the Force like Yoda and the Child. Plus, also look at that hair. As a side note, even though I had the illustrated guide to the Phantom Menace as a kid, I always thought Yaddle was a guy just with a really luscious flow, but that's really irrelevant to the video, so let's continue. Unsurprisingly, Legends, the old expanded universe, did increase the roster somewhat. Most notably, we have Master Vandar Takair, who appears in Knight to the Old Republic. He was, besides being, in my opinion, the only decent member of the Jedi Enclave on Dantooine of that era, but also the head of that council and a member of the Jedi Council galaxy-wide. Obviously, he was very, very powerful in the Force. The Old Republic MMO also gives us another Jedi Council member of that sort of time period, Oteg, who was born just over a century after Vandar and himself was obviously gifted in the Force as well. Finally, for Legends, we have Minch. I'm going to put a big asterisk next to this one. Minch appears in a single issue of the Star Wars Tales comics as a, comparatively at least, young Jedi. Now, the reason for the asterisk here is twofold. For one, Star Wars Tales comics, at least at that point, were not strictly canon, and also Minch was at one point intended to be the name of Yoda. So notwithstanding the fact that Minch has been included and mentioned in later reference books, I don't think he's really worth talking about, because to me, that tale was always supposed to be a possible portrayal of Yoda's early years. So besides for some minor other references, that's pretty much it. The new Essential Guide to Alien Species specifically mentions that there there are three members of Yoda's unnamed species, and that would exclude both Minch and Oteg, but that just has to do with release timing. On the topic of today's video specifically, the resource also mentioned that while there's no evidence that Yoda or the other Jedi typify the species, i.e. that all would be force sensitive, it does mention that the limited appearances and their attachment to the force are certainly a considerable fact. But that was the easy work. Let's move on. And before we do so, I just want to say outright that I do think that there are, when combined with what we know, several, I'll call soft factors, which lead me to believe that all of Yoda's species are force sensitive. I mean, let's get the obvious out of the way. That from a pure statistical point, it's extraordinarily difficult and rare to be a Jedi, much less a member of the Jedi Council. Aside from Baby Yoda in canon, every single member of the species that we've seen has reached that that pinnacle. We've never heard of or seen any of the species being anything other than what you'd call an ultimate virtuous symbol of the light. Moving on though, slightly we'll come back to this topic, we do know that a species-wide attachment to the Force is certainly possible. As I've mentioned a few times in recent videos, Darth Plagueis specifically recognizes that natural or evolutionary pressures may seriously affect the development of midi-chlorians. 
This can manifest in resistance to certain types of force abilities, the Salamiri's ability to create force bubbles, and probably more. That however is a very scientific way to examine the question, and perhaps not totally appropriate for this situation. I think it's more likely to do with the fact that the force has a general plan for the universe. It has motivation. As Plagueis recognizes, it enacts its will among the living beings and can imbue people and things with force power. However, regardless of the mechanisms, we do know that in both canon and legends there are several examples of species-wide attachment or disattachment to the Force. In canon, for example, we have the Zepho, which seem to be largely, if not totally, Force-sensitive. Then of course there are beings like the Force-wielders of Mortis. Legends has far more. The Miraluka, as I discussed in yesterday's video, seem to have the universal trait of using the Force as vision. The Sith race, even before merging with the Dark Jedi exiles who would come to inhabit their planet, were also Force-sensitive on a species-wide level and seemingly attuned to the dark side. So, given the statistics I mentioned above, and the lore basis that we now have, I think we can really solidly say that, yeah, perhaps with few exceptions, all of Yoda's species can use the Force, and can probably do so quite powerfully. But I want to return to a few topics that I mentioned earlier. The Force very clearly has a plan for the universe. Plagueis, for example, talks about how the human race is seemingly favored by the Force, and even the Star Wars databank says, and I quote, While the Force can grant users powerful abilities, it also directs their actions, and it has a will of their own, which both scholars and mystics have spent millennia seeking to understand. It is a mysterious energy field created by life that binds the galaxy together. It's my opinion that the Yoda species has been chosen as one to be powerful in the Force, and to be perhaps a pure representative or warrior for the light. It's not like they're mindless beings, but I'd say an avatar for the light side of the force might be a good way to frame it. That could also tie into issues regarding why we never see more than two species at any given time, why they seem to be so exceedingly rare, and generally how the new essential guide to aliens explains why, despite decades and centuries of research, no information about the species can be ascertained. But I mean, even read the way Yoda has talked about in the Revenge of the Sith novelization, and this is from his duel with Sidious. Their clash transcended the personal. When new lightning blazed, it was not Palpatine burning Yoda with his hate, it was the Lord of all Sith scorching the Master of all Jedi into a smoldering huddle of clothing and green flesh. A thousand years of hidden Sith exalted in their victory. Your time is over. The Sith rule the galaxy, now and forever. And it was the whole of the Jedi Order that rocketed from its huddle, making its own body a weapon to blast the Sith to the ground. At an end your rule is, and not short enough it was. There appeared a blade the color of life. From the shadow of a black wing, a small weapon, a holdout, an easily concealed backup. A tiny bit of treachery expressing the core of Sith mastery slid into a withered hand and spat a flame-colored blade of its own. When those blades met, it was more than Yoda against Palpatine, more than millennia of Sith against the legions of Jedi. This was the expression of the fundamental conflict of the universe itself. Light against dark, winner take all, force balancing. To me, I can't read that quote and see anything other than, as I described earlier, an avatar of the light side fighting an avatar of the dark. And when you read that source as well as various other sources, it does seem like Palpatine too is beyond mortal. A black hole personified, and I think that's to the point of his appearance in episode 9. Now true, much of what I just said is legends, and even more of it is conjecture. Finally, some too is tied only to Yoda and not necessarily the species as a whole, but I think when you take the hard facts, the pretty clear-cut lore, and a bit of healthy speculation, it seems clear that Yoda's species as a whole must be Force-sensitive and is probably powerfully Force-sensitive and attached to the light. That, however, is just my opinion. Did I get this one wrong? Did you enjoy this video? Do you have any questions you'd like me to answer in the future? Leave it down below, and if you enjoyed, please drop a like, subscribe, and turn notifications on for next time. But that's all for now. Have a great day, and as always, may the Force be with you. Thank <laughs> you.